So when it comes to your free time, an average person often ponders about the meaning of life. You know, what the next meal may be. You know, what they're going to study, what they're going to work on, how their future looks. But I often ponder on the three-car garage I would really like to have when I grow old one day. Then again, uh, a lot of these cars that I'm going to mention... um, I probably won't be reaching because of its absurd price, but also, unfortunately, in the few decades to follow, there may be a shift towards, or probably is going to be a shift towards, fully electric. Uh, we already know that in the UK they announced that in 2030, no more electric, or no more internal combustion engine cars, meaning petrol or diesel cars, will be sold. Unfortunately, that means electric or hydrogen or e-fuel may be the future we we are still to see Um, and a lot of people now often meander towards or rather look towards electric cars um, for the future cars you know to hold a few years drive a few years some people even do electric conversions with their cars uh, which is actually not that expensive um, in comparison to other you know engine swaps or just buying a new car Um, but anyway a lot of you car guys out there often think about your perfect three-car garage, your ideal three-car garage. And I'd really like to share mine with you too today. And just remember, this one is the ideal, the the dream. This, there is no price attached. There is no circumstance or practical implication that's going to stop me from getting these cars in my dream world, of course. So... If you want to share yours, please do. I'd love to hear your opinions. Of course, the, uh, these are three cars out of the millions ever created. Um, so please share it on our social media. Comment down below. I'll share the links, um, which will probably be somewhere left or right above me um, at the moment. But anyway, let's get to it. Welcome to On The Overrun episode 7 of season 2. And uh, we are going to share what I think is the perfect three-car garage at the moment. Um, so I'm not going to worry about the electric cars. I'm not going to worry about future regulations or current regulations. I'm just going to buy the cars, get the cars that fits the bill, suits my needs. Uh, then again, you don't really need three cars. Um, you just need one probably. But hey, that's we are car guys, so I'm not going to worry about it. So firstly, there are probably three types of cars you like to have in your garage when you have the ideal three-car garage. Firstly, a sensible daily. Uh, now, of course, no one's going to choose a sensible daily because you have all the money in the world. Um, you can buy any car you want, but you at least want something comfortable. You at least want something that's going to take on the long road with the greatest of ease, just waft along at very legal speeds because, of course, traffic fines won't be a thing because you can just pay it. I probably own the police if you're that rich. Um, but in any case, sensible daily, very important. One that can fit the kids, fit the dog, buy the groceries, take you to work, you know, have some speed, have some sound, have some character. But I believe a sensible daily also shouldn't overpower what the other two cars are going to be. Because this one, it shouldn't have, you know, the world of character or a lot of sound or, uh, you know, a lack of sound detonation just to make it uncomfortable. This thing should be a comfortable ride. This thing should be the one you just sit in and say, now I'm at peace. Now I'm chilled, now I'm going to have a good drive. And of course, if you want to, you know, tow a caravan, tow a trailer or anything, you want to be able to use it. In some ways, it's going to be your workhorse. So the next car has to be a modern V12. As I said, in a few years' time, shift is going to be much more toward electric. So you want a V12 because V12s are dying out. The Lamborghini just announced that they will still do one generation of their 6.3 liter V12 currently in the Aventador, which is awesome. Ferrari said they will probably be able to push out one more generation of their coveted, absolutely amazing, sonorous 6.5 V12, which is in the A12 Superfast and GTS variants. Um, and Aston Martin will probably not be able to do it next generation V12 because they're already focusing more toward electric cars. Uh, more towards V6 hybrids and the like. So you have to have a modern V12. Why I say modern? Because there's an old car coming (laughs) in the lineup, but also just because it looks good. Uh, You can go on a long tour. You can go on a long journey with the greatest of ease and just, you know, enjoy your ride with an amazing soundtrack. Um, Also, the next one, you want an analog driver's car or 
equivalent to a Porsche, in my opinion. Yes, I'm very biased towards Porsche. I know this, but it's my favorite sort of brand. It makes my favorite cars. So I can probably do what I want because it's my podcast. Um, but you want an analog driver's car. You want something for manual. You want something with maybe a bit of a more classic look, maybe a bit of sleeker lines, smaller design, rear-wheel drive, something that enables you to drive the car. A lot of cars these days drive you. A lot of cars have ECUs and computers and engines that basically take you on a ride. I mean, autonomous cars and the like, but I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about any car really with all its uh, assistance and security packages and whatever. You need something that you are going to drive because that is driving, steering, you know, pedals, throttle, clutch, and something you can manually shift gears with. So I've uh, compiled my top three cars and I'm going to share it with you now. The first one is an Alpina B5 bi-turbo touring. This is a BMW in essence. It's basically a BMW 5 Series touring, but with a massive V8 in it. BMW don't make these anymore. But Alpina, which is basically a sister company to BMW, coach build or, or, or basically make these cars as part of the BMW production line together with all the 5 Series. But the thing about the B5 bi-turbo, it has a 4.4 liter V8 bi-turbo, 447 kilowatt, uh, a lot of torque. Um, but this car is the ultimate sleeper. If you don't know cars, you will not know the difference between this and your average 5, liter di- uh, five series diesel. Uh, what makes it so cool is the fact that you can debadge it. Wheels can be unassuming as a BMW badge in front. Nothing but the exhaust tips at the back will tell you that this is something special. And that's the awesome part of it. I want it to be a sleeper. I don't want people, you know, knocking my windows, you know, basically, I won't say terrorizing, but just going about this car being like, ooh and ah, I want just to be able to enjoy the ride. I want to be able to go on the highway in in very legal speeds. I want to be able to tow a caravan with the greatest of ease. I want to overtake. I want to still have a nice, comfortable ride, even though I'm going very fast. So the thing about this car, 3.7 seconds to 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, it's extremely fast. We'll go over 320 kilometers per hour, which you'll probably never use. But that's fine. Your wife, your kids, your dog, all of them will enjoy it. It's even more comfortable than your usual BMW 5 Series models because it has a Comfort Plus mode. So it just wafts along similar to a Rolls Royce kind of analogy of how they do cars so you are going to enjoy this one especially on the wrong trip home from I don't know wherever you went to your work meeting the second car in my dream three car garage is the Ferrari 812 GTS this is the non-roof convertible version or variant of the 812 Superfast this is Ferrari's at the moment fastest production car fastest production convertible they haven't really done a v12 convertible in a while um, not a special edition that is of course so what makes this car so special is the fact that it has a v12 and there is no turbos no electric motors no superchargers taking away from the experience of the absolutely symphonic or sonorous sound that that car produces and without a roof you just get more of the experience um, and as I said, because it is a dying breed, you need one in your garage now because we don't know how long we are able to still buy internal combustion cars or engines rather. So what makes this car also special is the fact that it produces close to 600 kilowatt of power, basically 800 horsepower or 720 newton meters of torque. You are not going to lack for power in any way. If you do feel there is not enough power in this car, you don't need a car, you need a jet. Um, but further on, this car does about 100 kilometers an hour in, in sub three seconds. It starts at a very measly 800 and, well, not 800, 8 million, 200,000 rand. So that's only a starting price. You're probably going to spec it up to much more, probably going to be close to 10 million rand. Um, but hey, yet again, this is your dream garage. Don't worry about price for now. Um, as I spoke about the best looking convertibles some time ago or soft tops rather i also mentioned the aston martin dbs volante yes awesome car but i feel there's just more character that you get in the ferrari having a prancing horse in your garage uh yes it it might be a class thing also but 
having a Ferrari in your garage with so much history, so much prowess, I think it just makes it very, very special and just adds another level of exclusivity um, and speciality to your three dream car to garage. So also one thing about this car is in some way it is very comfortable. It is a Grand Tour in a sense, front engine, uh, front mid-engine V12. You're going to enjoy the ride. It's not a very uncomfortable ride. This thing is not necessarily used to go around the track very quickly. You don't have to go around the track very quickly. You can if you want to. But this thing is also used for your long journeys. I can just see it driving on the PCH next to California. Maybe the Southern Thrones taking it through a few valleys. Uh, maybe the Swiss Alps, you know. You're going to use this car. Well, we'll be able to use this car in, in any circumstance really. Whether it's a long road trip or a spirit to drive through a mountain pass. But I feel the looks, the sound and the fact that it is a Ferrari just adds another level to the fact that this car is part of my three car garage. And the last car, which is by far and most my favorite car ever, is of course a Porsche and it is my analog driver car. It's called a Singer 911. So the special thing about this car, it's not just a typical Porsche. A Porsche. In, in fact, it's not a new Porsche. It is also not a classic Porsche in some way it is. But Singer is a company that restores or does restore mod versions of 911s. A very specific version of 911 called the 964. It is produced between 1983 and 86, if I'm correct. But basically what Singer do is they take a 964 shell, whether in Targa or Coupe, variants and they build it to your specification so singer build a relationship with you the owner and they get to know you they get to know what you like your preferences and they build the perfect Porsche or the perfect 911 around you the engines they produce is a four liter flat six air cooled engine the best and per most perfect heavenly iteration of the four liter flat six uh, the fact that it is air cooled also indicates the fact that it is very much Porsche before the water-cooled water era. Um, classic Porsche, Porsche as you know it, unadulted Porsche if you want to call it that way. But the engine is also produced by Cosworth, which produces the Gordon Murray engine, which produces the Valkyrie engine. And in terms of sound, I don't know if I prefer the V12 or that thing, even though it is a six-cylinder. Um, it is unlike anything you've ever heard. But the sound in the engine is amazing. But every single part of this car is custom made to your preference. There is not a part of this car that is overlooked in the journey in terms of design, in terms of build. There's not a single part that is overlooked. Singer's motto actually is everything is important. It is written on the dorsal. When you enter the car, you can see it in every part of the bonnet, the seats, the gauge clusters. Everything is to your specification. The interior, the exterior, every part of it, the deep dish wheels, specially designed by Michelin or BBS, the rims. So there isn't a more perfect car for me. Um, it is unbelievably expensive. It ranges anywhere from 7 million to 28 million rand, um, which is absurd probably. But it's much more than just the production. It's much more than just the meticulous design and build of the parts. It's actually just greater than the sum of its parts. Um, of course, it represents much more than just a 911, but rather the, you know, the passion behind Porsches and, and 911s. Um, go behind this thing, the sentiment, um, you know, how people feel about Porsches and 911s, and the fact that they are building the perfect one suited to your needs. You can't really fault this car. Um, even if you go looking for mistakes, I don't think you'll be able to fault this car. But in many ways, that is why this is my favorite car and should 100% be part of this um, dream car garage, three car garage rather. Um, interesting about this car also, you have about a two to three year wait before you get your car since you ordered one. And you basically wait two years for the order book to be fulfilled till it gets to your name and then they build a year and then you only get your car. So it's quite a buildup of anticipation and expectation. But I think that also adds to how special this car is. But anyway, just to recap, my perfect three car garage would definitely be a B5 Alpino Turbo, bi turbo, if, and I don't even like BMWs, but perfect sleeper. The A12 GTS, 
from Ferrari, the dying breed of a V12, still in a modern car. And then the Singer 911 to my perfect specification, which will probably be like a dark green and then also like a more towards a wooden and, and brown leather interior. But more on that spec later. If I had to have a B team, which of course you got to have, there's enough time to ponder about it also. Probably be a 205 GTI from, Paul, from Peugeot. Probably one of the best driving experiences, analog driving experiences you can get. 575 Maranello, also from Ferrari, quite an old car, but Grand Tour V12, and then a Porsche GT3 Touring. There is ample amount of cars you can choose from, and I don't think you'll get tired of writing down and, and getting combinations of what your perfect city car garage would look like, um, but please share yours. I'd love to comment on it, love to engage with you. Um, on what you think your perfect recall garage is. That's what it's about. It's about the engagement. It's about the conversation around it. Of course, it's it's one way just for me just to share what my perfect dream car garage would look like. Um, but it's more about the conversation. It's more about the people sharing their passion. Um, that's what this podcast is about. It's about gathering communities of car people. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you had a good one. And just remember, loving cars is way better than drugs. All right. Cheers. Thank you.